Hey guys, uh, today what I want to do is I want to go through with you the rules for shifting, transforming graphs, right? So we're going to look at uh, shifting graphs left or right, up or down, uh, stretching them in the X and Y direction, and uh, maybe even reflecting them as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up uh, Desmos here. So I've got my Desmos and I, I want to think uh, Firstly, about how we're going to approach this particular problem. So I've got the graph here, y equals x squared, very uh, a graph that you should all be very familiar with. And we can think, well, how can I shift this graph up by 1? You think, well, that's fairly easy. I just take all of my x squared values and I just add 1 to them. Okay, and that's what happens, isn't it? The graph shifts up by 1. Or if I add 2, I can shift it up by 2. And 3, shift it up by 3. Okay, well... That's very good, but that doesn't actually help me to understand how I could shift the graph left or right in the x direction. It also means that if I was to look at this graph here, right, uh, which is a circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, how, how would I shift that up by 1? Well, I can't just take that graph and add 1, right? That, that doesn't work. Um, that doesn't shift the graph up or down at all. So... So what are the rules exactly that are going to work in every set of circumstances? Well, what I want to show you is that the, really the key to understanding how graphs transform, right? how they shift, how they stretch, how they reflect, is to understand that what we're doing is we are replacing x or y with different terms. Okay? So what we do is we take out x, or y from our equation and we replace it with something else. So let's look at our circle. I want to shift this circle in the x direction by one. Now to do that, what I've got to do is I've got to replace the x with x minus one. Right? So in other words, I take out x squared and I replace it with x minus one squared. If I want to shift it in the x direction by two, minus 2, uh, or a 4, x minus 4, right? So in order to shift in the x direction, I replace x with x minus whatever I'm shifting it by. And the same fact is true for y, right? If I want to shift it in the y direction by 1, I replace y with y minus 1, okay? Or y minus 2, y minus 3, Ooh, y minus 3. So that's the idea of, of shifting. Okay, if I want to shift in the x direction, I replace x with x minus something. If I want to shift in the y direction, I replace by y minus something. And of course, you could think of it, if, if you want to shift down by, by minus 1, you could, you could think of it as y minus minus 1, if you prefer. And that's a shift down by 1. Okay. Now, what about stretching? Okay, if we want to stretch uh, our graph, then what we're going to do is we replace x with x divided by something. So in this case, let's do x divided by 2. What do you notice there? We've taken our original red graph and we have stretched it in the x direction by a factor of 2. Right? So instead of the value uh, 4 there, that becomes the value 8. I wanted to stretch it by a factor of 3, replace x with x divided by 3. Can you see that? And uh, the same thing is true with y. So if I want to stretch this in the y direction, I can replace y with y divided by 2, right? And I stretch the graph then by a factor of 2. Or I could replace it with y divided by 3. I stretch the graph by a factor of 3. Okay, so that's, that's stretching. I replace x with x divided by a or y with y divided by a, where a is the scale factor, right? So in this case here, y divided by 3, 3 is my scale factor, which means that I have um, increased the scale in my y direction by a factor of 3. So for example, this value here, where y is 4, it's been scaled up by 3 to become y is 12, right? That's the idea that we're following. So how do we think about squashing? Let's say we wanted to squash in the y direction by a, by a factor of two, right? Well, in effect, you can think of that a squash by a factor of two is the same as a scale factor of a half. 
Right? Can you see that there? So what I've done is I've scaled that graph by a factor of a half. So the y value of four becomes a y value of two, right? But of course, usually we don't write it as y divided by a half. We would write this as just two y, right? Because dividing by a half is the same as times it by two. So it depends how you want to remember it really, guys, right? If, if you prefer, you could say that a squash is replacing y with 2y or 3y or 4y. And a stretch is replacing y with y divided by 2, y divided by 3, and so forth. Right? It really, really depends on how you choose to remember it. But in each case, if you want to stretch, stretch or squash in the x or y direction, what you're really doing is you're replacing x with x divided by something, or you're replacing y with y divided by something, right? So the key idea is replacement. Okay, so we've done uh, shifting, we've done scaling. Let's have a quick think about reflecting. So I'm going to uh, take another graph. Let's say I take the graph of y equals e to the x. Okay, so we take that graph there, and uh, I'll just copy paste it here. So y is equal to e to the x. Let's say I want to take this graph here, and what I want to do is I want to uh, reflect it in the x-axis, right? Now you can think, actually, all that's going to do is it's going to take the y values and make them negative. I just do that, right? So the y values there, they've become negative, okay? But what about reflecting in the, in the y-axis? Well, to reflect in the y-axis, I do that. I want to explain what's going on here, because in, in both cases, actually, what's really going on is a replacement. If I reflect in the x-axis, what I'm doing is I am replacing this y here with minus y. Right? So if I replace y with minus y, then what I've done is I've reflected my graph in the x-axis. If I want to reflect in the y-axis, then what I do is I take my x and I replace it with minus x. You see, and that, that reflects uh, at my graph in the y-axis. So what I'm trying to get you to understand, again, the same idea is replacement, okay? If you want to shift the graph, you replace x or y with x minus a or y minus a. If you want to scale the graph, you replace x with x divided by a and y with y divided by a. If you want to reflect the graph, if you want to reflect in the y-axis, you replace x with minus x. And if you want to reflect in the x-axis, you replace y with minus y. Okay? Now then, this is going to bring us on to the exercise in uh, 6.9 that I'm going to get you to, to think about. Okay? Because here we've got y is equal to e to the x. What is y is equal to 2 to the power of x? Uh, not 2 to the power of x. What is y equals e to the 2x going to look like? Right? So what's the transformation that takes us from the red graph to this, this new graph here? What's happening? Well, we've got to think, what have we done? We've replaced x with 2x. And if we replace x with 2x, then what we saw before is we get a squash in the x direction. So you imagine you take the red graph and you squash it. And that's what's happened there, right? Or if I replace it now with 3x or 4x or 5x, all the time I'm squashing it more and more. Or if you prefer, you could think of it as instead of replacing x with 2x, I've replaced x with x divided by a half. It's the same thing, right? X divided by a half is the same as um, 2x. Um, but this time you could think of a half as your scale factor in the x direction, right? What you've done is you have scaled your graph in the x direction um, by a factor of a half, which is the same as squashing it by a factor of two. Okay, what about this one here? So you replace x with, uh, with uh, you know, 2x or 3x. What if I put 2 here? What would that do? Well, one way you could think about that is you could just say, well, it doubles all of my y values, doesn't it? So what I should get is I should get a stretch in the y direction. 
And that's exactly right, isn't it? We've stretched our graph in the y direction. So the value here, where y is equal to 1, has become y is equal to 2, and so on and so forth. But if we think about the rules that we learned earlier, all I want to show you is this is exactly the same as replacing y with y divided by 2. Right? It's the same thing, just algebraically been rearranged. And so this here is a stretch in the y direction. Okay, then lastly, what is y equals e to the x uh, plus 2? Well, it is a shift up by 2. Right, we've taken that point there, we've shifted it up by 2, and all of the other points. Okay. But, look, again, this is the same principle as I showed you before. A shift up by 2, we could just think of it as, you know, we take our graph in this case and we add 2. But again, the same thing we've done is, really done, is we've replaced y with y minus 2. Right? And if we replace y with y minus 2, then what we've done is we've shifted the graph up by 2. All right, then um, let's just then ask the general question. Let's, let's get rid of that for a second. Let's take an example book. Uh, let's go for y is equal to 3. Oh, let's ask the question, what does y equals, I don't know, 3e to the 2x minus 5. Right? What's going on there? Well, if, if we think about it, right, what's this 2 going to do, the 2x? That is a squash in the x direction by 2. So we've squashed the graph by 2 in the x direction. What's this 3 here? Well, that is a stretch in the y direction by 3. And what's that 5? That is going to be a shift down by 5. So let's have a look at that. Let me just uh, click that. Oh. What have we done? We have squashed by a factor of two we have stretched by a factor of three in the y direction and we've shifted it down by five what i'm going to show you is that that is the same thing just to check all of my uh, methods i've taught you so far okay, i just want you to check that that what i've got um yeah, let me just change that to a different color, I think. Change that to green. What I want you to see is that the blue line and the green line, they're the same thing, right? All I've done is I've just rearranged algebraically the blue to the green. So what's happened? Y minus minus 5? Well, that means I've shifted in the Y direction by minus 5. So I've gone down by 5. What's the dividing by 3? I've replaced y with y divided by 3. Well, it means I've stretched in the y direction by 3. What does this mean? The replacing x with 2x. It means I've squashed in the x direction by 2. Right? So hopefully you can see right, uh, that all of those operations there have happened. Okay. Um, I will do one more with you. I'm just going to get you to think of ln x. Let's just close these. So y is equal to ln x. Okay, can you see that? That's the graph of ln x. Let's say that I was to do y is equal to ln 2x. What would that look like? Just try to think about the rules that we've done so far. y equals ln 2x. I've replaced x with 2x, so that's a stretch sorry, a squash in the x direction by 2. So we've squashed it, and that's exactly what we've got. Okay, let's say I was to do ln 3x plus 1. It's a squash in the x direction by 3, and I've shifted it up by 1. Right, so you can think about it, I've replaced y with y minus 1, and that's what we've got there. So what I want you to do, guys, basically, is I want you to try to go through the exercise uh, 6.9, and then also to go through 6.10, and, and try to just get a feel for yourself, right? Keep practicing, keep playing with the graphs, try to understand how the graphs are being transformed and changed, so that if you look at a graph by yourself, right, if, if, you're, if you're given the equation of graph, that you can figure out for yourself 
what is going on. There is no substitute really for you playing around, working on this, figuring it out for yourself. I can tell you some of the rules. You need to go and practice and play with it. Okay, I hope you have a good lesson today. I will see you again soon.